The Friday injury report rolled out. We got some players not playing on Sunday. That's going to impact their fantasy lineups. There are also some players to look at, pick up, put in our lineups. Whatever we need to do to get the job done to get us through the week. Alexander Madison is going to get some opportunities this week with Zamir White out. We're going to see him get more touches potentially, get some more workload. But is that enough to get us the fantasy production we need? Maybe, maybe not. We're going to dig into that today. But before we do, you need to click that subscribe button right now. Because we're doing these deep dives every day. We're going deep on these players that are being impacted by injuries, rising the depth chart, waiver wire additions for your team, whatever it is, it's all right here. Click that button. Stop missing out. Ric Flair's watching you right now. Do not disappoint him. But that being said, Zeus is out. He's not going to play on Sunday, and you're not going to expect him in your fantasy lineups, but you probably wasn't anyways. That's the thing, and we're not very big on the Raiders' backfield here. So that might be an indicator to what's going on for the rest of the video here. But Alexander Madison has been getting some work, and he's been getting work in the passing game. He was like the 1B or the 1A, whatever you want to call it, because Amir White wasn't getting it done even though he's getting the carries. But now he's going to get the opportunity to get the work up the gut along with his work in the passing game, which is very exciting to see in this backfield if there's ever anything exciting here. Amir Dula could be getting some work here as well. Something to note for your deep leagues. Alexander Madison can be productive in flashes, especially in the right game script and the right opportunities. He's shown that off and on throughout his career. And looking at the touches here, Zamir White, 49 rushing attempts, 152 yards, 3.1 yards per carry hasn't been looking good they've been going away from him as well alexander madison 5.1 yards per carry getting more run in the passing game we called him a satellite back earlier this season however he's traditionally not that's not really his role usually but here in this offense they've been using him as such amir Dula has just been sticking around the league forever and we're looking at this matchup against the denver broncos we got a 35 and a half over under the denver broncos i would say they're tough against the run they're also in these weird game scripts because they're so slow on offense it keeps the games low scoring they got up on tampa bay as well and made it hard for their running backs to get in the right game script kenneth walker blew up against them and then braylon allen and the jets and Brees Hall, they weren't able to get anything done. The Broncos will always be in weird game scripts this year. They got a rookie quarterback in Bo Nix who dinks and dunks it. They try to keep the game slow and close to where they can nudge it out at the end. A lot of teams try to do that, but the Broncos are very good at that. The Raiders are going to have to get things dirty on this one. And that means we're not very high on the run game. But we weren't ever high on the run game for the Raiders. I'm definitely going to say that. Going over to the 4 for 4 rankings here. Alexander Madison ranked 25th behind Tyrone Tracy. Above Justice Hill. Above Rashad White. But that's after White's game on Thursday. So maybe they manipulated the rankings or not. Chase Brown behind him. Rico Dowdle. Cam Akers. When really just looking at those names behind him. And you got any of those guys on your depth chart. For fantasy, you're trying to figure out who to start. Honest to God, I'd flip a coin. I'd flip a coin. Like, Rigo Dowdle, a bad matchup, getting probably a similar workload as Madison, but you're just hoping one crosses the goal line. That's what I'm seeing. Same thing with Cam Akers. He's busted on you like two weeks in a row. He's getting an opportunity this week against Buffalo, but he's probably going to get eight, nine, ten touches. He lost some of it last week, but all he has to do is cross the goal line. I don't see how I could start him above Rashad White and Bucky Irving prior to the knowledge of that Thursday game due to the volume and opportunity of that matchup. Jaleel McLaughlin, kind of similar as Madison. So looking at this, he's a coin flip with running backs ranked 25 to like 35. That being said, you're putting him in your lineups if you're looking for touches. But you're staying away if you're good at running back. If you're good at running back, you don't need him. He's not going to be a guy that's going to win your league. He might pop off here and there if he plays in a run of games as the starting running back for the Raiders because odds are that's going to happen sometime down the line. But if you need touches, you need targets out of the backfield, you need workload, you need a running back that could cross the goal line, this is a guy to look at 
this is the guy I looked at. I would not be playing around with my top 15 running backs with this guy. I wouldn't be doing that. He's a guy getting touches. And touches give you opportunity. And touches allow you to potentially break a game script with a long run across the goal line or whatever. But again, you're only looking at this running back for touches if you need it. Or maybe a stash option so nobody else can pick up a running back off the waiver wire right now. That could be in line for starter touches because starter touches right now are free for Alexander Madison off the waiver wire. And every running back in the league who's getting starter touches is rostered in your fantasy league right now. So make sure he's at least rostered so nobody else can have him as a free play because you never know. If he's getting 10 to 15 touches in a game, he could just break one loose and it could be just a gaping hole. There's six points right there. Cross the goal line on another run. On like a one yard scamper, there's 12 fantasy points, and that's all it really takes. And you're getting decent production. And as long as he's getting workload, there is going to be opportunity. It's not going to be grand. You're not going to be excited about it. There's a bunch of other running backs you'd rather have. But if you're hurting, you're decimated, sometimes you got to take what's there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching, catch you on the next video.